Hi, I'm Dr. Apurva Raghavan. I'm a dermatologist practicing at Apollo First Med Hospitals for the past four years. On the occasion of World Vitiligo Day, which falls on June 25th, Glenmark Pharmaceutical Limited has launched a patient awareness campaign called Embrace Your Inner Self. I take this opportunity to talk to you about the truth about this condition, to help encourage those suffering from this disease, to bust some myths and to help transform their lives. Now let's talk about vitiligo. Now all of us have a certain skin color and we have cells called melanocytes which live in our skin that gives us this skin color. Now in vitiligo, these melanocytes in certain areas of the body, they get destroyed and the color drops out and you end up with a white patch. Now why your body attacks your melanocytes, we don't really know. That is why it's called an autoimmune condition, right? Now vitiligo can come either on its own or it can come along with some other autoimmune conditions such as autoimmune thyroid diseases, diabetes, a condition called alopecia areata where you can get patches of hair loss on your scalp, etc. Now, given that vitiligo is an autoimmune inherited condition, inherited means it is passed on through genetics. So 20 to 30 percentage of people who have vitiligo often have a close relative an ancestor or someone in their family who's had vitiligo or any of these other autoimmune conditions that I told you about. What vitiligo is not is it's not contagious. It's not infectious. It cannot be spread from person to person. If I have vitiligo and I give you a handshake or a hug, you're not going to get it from me. So that's what people need to know. Vitiligo is like I told you autoimmune, inherited, has a genetic component. It is not infectious. right? Now let's come to diagnosis. How do you diagnose vitiligo? Now all white spots are not vitiligo. Yes, vitiligo presents as white spots, but when you have a white spot, it can be an infection, it can be due to sun damage, it can be due to aging, it can be due to many number of reasons. So what one should not do is refer online, get scared, make a misdiagnosis, go to some quack doctor, try some alternative therapies and land up in a bunch of trouble. Please come to us, we are dermatologists, we are trained in this, it is our job to identify what condition you have. So please go to a proper dermatologist who can, you know, listen to your history, your background, your condition and then make an accurate diagnosis of vitiligo. Now let's talk about treatment. Now when we talk about autoimmune conditions like vitiligo, we talk about the term control but not cure. So you know that conditions like diabetes. As of now, they don't really have any cure, but vitiligo is one of these conditions where you cannot talk about a cure. You should only be talking about control, disease management, improving their quality of life, repigmenting the patches. These are our goals of treatment and to offer psychological support to our patients suffering from this, right? Now we might take tests like some blood tests. We might take a biopsy to even confirm if it is vitiligo. So let's talk about disease control and what we can do. There are medical treatments in the forms of creams and tablets. There is UV therapy. There are some surgical modalities and there is now also gene therapy which is available, but it's, you know, kind of in the experimental stages. There are also very good options now available, available for camouflage. So if you have certain patches somewhere and it's very visible, but you are on proper treatment in this meanwhile, you can do these camouflage techniques, which are in the form of very specialized, customized makeup, some semi-permanent tattooing can be done to cover up those patches also, right? So what are we talking about? We are talking about um, achieving disease stability. We want to make the disease stable. We want to improve color in these patches. Now vitiligo treatment is usually long term. And it can be a very arduous process for the patient to go through. There might be recurrences. There might be times when the disease is so unstable that even when you're on treatment, you can have a slight increase in the number of patches. When you stop treatment, it can recur. It is a very, very painstaking and a very big burden to these patients. So it is important for all of us, including the doctors to be very empathetic. Often your doctor might try or do two or three treatments to arrive at what is right for you because our treatment is based on the extent of vitiligo, wherever you have these patches, what is the surface area, do you have any other comorbid conditions, what is your life condition at the present, are you getting married, are you young, are you going to college, is it embarrassing for you to show these patches. So I should take into account all of these and make a tailor-made package of treatment for you which will work for you with minimum side effects as possible, right. So this is all about the treatment aspect. 
Now, the final message that I want to give for World Vitiligo Day is that no one with vitiligo should ever be discriminated. It will become like someone discriminating or hating on another person for the shape of their nose, the shape of their eyes, the structure of their hair, because this is not really under their control, right? Vitiligo is something that they inherited, that manifested at some point in their life, that they were born with. They really can't do anything about it. So be empathetic, be kind, try to understand that they are also suffering. Don't discriminate against them. Don't ever look at vitiligo as a curse. A person with vitiligo, be it a man or woman or whatever gender they are, they can marry, they can have children. It is not contagious. No form of contact can spread vitiligo from one person to another. The only thing you should remember is that it can be inherited. But, you know, whether it manifests in a person or not is also not really under their control. So be kind to patients with vitiligo. Change your outlook towards them. Get rid of this social stigma and embrace them as part of your daily life so that their outlook on themselves also become better and they feel as though they are a part of society and not rejected by society. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I once again thank Glenmark for this wonderful initiative and I fully support the cause of eliminating this stigma against vitiligo patients and making them feel happy in their own skin whether they have pigmentation or not and to help them as best as possible. Thank you again. Okay.